All right, this is my Monster Mill MM2 malt mill. So, there's the gap adjustment on the side. You can see the rollers underneath. And then this top bucket is just like a big funnel. It drops the grain down onto the rollers. All right, go. So that's what it looks like without the hopper. Here's our grain. Show you the control panel. So this is the HLT, the hot liquor tank side. You can see we've got the PID set for 180 degrees. It's currently at 144. This is the boil kettle currently off because the green light's not on. I haven't labeled any of these guys yet, but we're getting there. This is the pump for the HLT. This is the pump for the wort side, which we'll talk about in just a minute. So here's the HLT and the boil kettle in the middle. And my little mash tun on the right, which I'm working on uh, replacing at some point. You can see the braid in there for laudering. That's when we separate the sweet wort from the grains, and we'll do that later. And then under here, we have two pumps. This is just my water pump. He just pumps hot water from the hot liquor tank. And up and over, well, the hose is in the wrong kettle right now, but it goes over to the mash tun. And then this complicated mamma jamba here. This pumps the word around. So we've got in from the kettle, from the boil kettle. We've got in from the mash tun, which is connected to a grant, so that this kind of pulls wort, so that we always have a head going down to the pump. You can see that there. And then on the output side, this will be for mash recirculation. It's not hooked up right now. And this is for boil kettle recirculation. So this pumps back here to this valve at the front of the boil kettle, which has a little 90 degree fitting, and it pumps the word around in a circle to make a whirlpool. And this is for helping with a siphon and for pumping out to the fermenter after everything's done. All right, so we'll get that going shortly once everything heats up. All right, guys, we're just about ready here. You can see the temperature has almost reached the, uh, the temp I have it set at. We're striking it at 165 degrees, but I like to pump into the mash tun about 10, 12 degrees hot, and that you could see my hand gestures behind the camera, I'm sure. Uh, about 10 to 12 degrees hot, so that the mash tun heats up, and then when the water comes down to our strike temp, then we know that it's not going to change, because the mash tun soaks up the heat. So we can just uh, use the calculation in Beersmith. This is my hot liquor tank. You can see my sight glass. This little green line, that tells me the minimum height for water when I turn my element on, because you don't want to run the element dry. And these O-rings, I use those to tell me how much water I want to pump out. So I know I want 27 quarts, and based on some calculations, I know 27 quarts is from here to here and then I just set the o-ring that way I can just eyeball it as I'm pumping so we're ready to pump now you can see we've got the hose going up into the mash tun and I made sure before that liquid is flooding the pump head that's what this little uh, this little guy here is for and you can see the water comes out there so now I know the pump head is flooded because the um, March pump needs a needs a siphon it can't suck air so we're going to turn the pump on 
and water's gonna start flowing. Whee! And then once we come down to 165, my beautiful assistant is going to pour the grains in and we'll start mashing. So the reason that we picked 165 is because my brewing software told me that when I mix the 64 degree grain with the 165 degree water that it'll level out at 154. And we're going to start adding the grain. I'm going to add about half. We're going to stir it until it's smooth and then I'm going to add the other half. We're trying to eliminate clumps and dough balls because we want as much of the grain in contact with the water as we can get. Grain, water, go. And I do a pretty thin mash. I do a quart and a half of water for every pound of grain. So a thinner mash I find makes it a lot easier to stir and eliminate the dough balls. I feel like there's a big honking one right there. You can see it floating like a Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> 156. 156 isn't too bad. We're making um, we're making a best bitter here, and a slightly high mash temp will give you a more sweet finished beer, a less dry beer, if you will. So I'm not too concerned if we're at 155. 156, eh, maybe a little high. We can add a little bit of cool water. Look at that, 150.9, I'll take 153.9 all day long. Now we let it sit for an hour. All right, I just wanted to share with you guys one of the more important aspects of brewing. Make sure you have a good homebrew on tap. My nice John Courage glass here. This is Bender's Blonde Ale, made from a recipe on Homebrew Talk. Uh, this is Edward's Centennial Blonde, not Edward's, I'm sorry, Beer Muncher's Centennial Blonde. So this is a beautiful blonde ale. And it's delicious. Here, have a drink. Smells good, right? Yeah, that smells great. <laughs> delicious. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do... It smells to die for. <laughs> first thing I'm going to do is pull off a bit. I'm going to start the, uh, the flow very slowly because I don't want to compact the grain bed too much. Get rid of that because that had some old stale water in it. So what I'm going to do now is, all right, you can stop starting. I'm going to take off a few quarts and recirculate it back to the top. If I had my pump properly plumbed in, I could do this without using a bucket. But what this does is it sets the grain bed so that the grain will act as a filter. So I'm going to let the, the wort run clear and then pour the cloudy wort back on top to be filtered by the grain bed. Alright, so now we can open things up a little bit. We're going to set the pump to pump back into the kettle. We'll get things going here. So what we'll do is modulate the kettle's output, or well, input to the kettle, output from the pump, so that we keep uh, liquid level 
in the grant. So you can see it's about half full. That's about where I want it. So we're going to try to match the output of the pump to how fast the liquid is coming off the grain. All right, here we are just about to sparge. So basically we're just going to add a set amount of water based on the recipe. Stir it up, let it sit for a few minutes to dissolve all the sugars, and then pump that into the kettle along with everything else. Let me give you guys a little close up here. Again, we're draining from the mash tun into the grant. Down the pump, back up from the pump, and into the boil kettle. Right there. So we're going to do this twice to make sure all of the liquid is rinsed, or all, rather, all of the sugar is rinsed from the grain. Normally I do a single sparge, but because I'm doing a 10 gallon batch and this mash tun isn't big enough to hold all of the liquid, we have to do it twice. So no big deal, just a little extra time is all. Alright, we're getting ready to boil now. You can see we've got a bunch of work in there. We've still got one more sparge to go. But uh, I'm heating up the work while we're sparging to save some time. Now I'm going to put in this stuff, which is called Firm Cap S from Brewmaster's Warehouse. And basically what it is, is Gas X. It's Symethicone. And what it does is it helps all the little bubbles that would normally stack up and cause a boil over coalesce into one big bubble and prevent boil overs. So this uh, this kettle has a lot of head space so I'm really not too concerned about it but it's cheap insurance. I'm sure it's kind of hard to see but we've got a pretty good boil going on here. I've decreased the, the power on the element down to 70 percent. And I'm going to start adding hops. This recipe calls for four ounces of Fugles. One, two, three. And then we'll start timing our boil. That's 60 minutes. All right, we're at 15 minutes. Time for a 15 minute hop addition, which is one more ounce of Fugel. You can hear me moving around here because I'm trying to find my scissors, which I constantly misplace. Ah, there they are. Sorry about that. Whoops! Hey, get, get out of the boil. You don't go in there. <laughs> We're just about done with the boil. We're ready to take the heating element out and put the cooler, put the chiller in. So, heating element out, I can take it out just a little bit. No, 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 no. Not yet. First, we've got to shut everything off. That's why I ask. Now it can come out. So, I'll plug it so that you know, we're not tethered there. All right, this is my immersion chiller. It's 50 feet of copper. It's got, it's basically two 25 foot runs of copper. And we're gonna hook the hose up to it. I don't worry about, some people put their chiller in 15 minutes before the end of the boil. I don't really worry about that. I rinse it off, give it a quick spray down with the sanitizer. And it's going into 200 degree liquid. That's far more temperature than you need to kill any bad stuff on it. I think pasteurization happens at 160 degrees. 
So I'm perfectly fine with uh, 200 and change. So what I normally do is I take the output of the chiller and put it in the mash tun, and then I use that hot water for cleaning later. So I'm running cold water down through the coils. The cold water is picking up heat from the wort. And it's coming out here. You can see how hot that water is. That means the heat exchanger is doing a good job. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the pump on, and the pump is going to circulate the, the wort so that it gives the, um, it has better contact with the cooling coils. All right, gang, we've reached 68 degrees according to my thermometer. So we're going to stop chilling now. Would you shut the hose off, please? Thank you. You can disconnect that. Quick connect here. We'll take the chiller out and wash that down. I don't know how well you can see it in here, but can you see the wort spinning around? That's just water. I don't worry about that. You see the wort spinning around? That's from my whirlpool fitting in there. The pump is recirculating the wort, making it spin around. And what I'm going to do is let that happen for 10 minutes. What that'll do is help all of the solids kind of clump together in the middle, and I'll get less of the solids in my fermenter at the end. All right, almost the last step. Now we're going to pump the wort. Now that it's cool, we're going to pump it into the fermenter. I'm using a six-gallon better bottle here, which is basically just a plastic carboy. Turn the pump on. Rock and roll. Everything is completely sanitary because we've been running boiling work through it for the last 20 minutes. And there we go. Dishes are done, man. And now the last order of business is pitching yeast. So might as well do that while we got the camera going here. I've got the world's biggest Erlenmeyer flask full of a yeast uh, starter that I made. Normally I would chill the starter and decant most of the wort off, but since I got started late, I made it yesterday, so we're pitching the whole thing. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now I'm going to go into the fermenting fridge with blow-off tubes and airlocks. Well, not airlocks, blow-off tubes and a tank. Hey, and a tank. And that's it. It'll be beer in a week. And then it just needs to carbonate. So thanks for joining me. Hope you had fun.